in China's Xinjiang region. Up to two million Uyghurs and other Muslim minorities have been detained in vast government camps, and they continue to face what the U.S. has called a genocide. Beijing denies the allegations, dismisses them as propaganda, and says the camps are merely, quote, vocational training centers for combating religious, uh, religious extremism. Now, some Uyghurs have managed to leave China, but some, even abroad, say they're not safe. A new Human Rights Watch report says China has tracked down hundreds of Uyghurs across the globe, forcing them to return and face persecution. From Kazakhstan to Australia, to now on the ground in Xinjiang itself, CNN has been locating families who have been separated after loved ones were detained. Now, a CNN investigation dives into Uyghur deportations from the Middle East, a stinging betrayal by predominantly Muslim countries. Jomana Karachi has more for you. This quiet Uyghur protest outside Istanbul's infamous Saudi consulate is a race against time. Noriman's father's fate hangs in the balance. If he's sent back to China, he'll be imprisoned, and there's danger of death, she tells us. Noriman Wali says she and her sister lost contact with their mother in China's Xinjiang region four years ago. If, God forbid, we lose our father as well, it will destroy us, she says. Her father, Hamdallah Wali, a Uyghur Muslim scholar, was nabbed by Saudi authorities in November while on a pilgrimage to Islam's holiest city. Nuriman pleads, send him back to Turkey where he's a resident, not China. For her father, there is still time. For others, there is little hope. Activists say at least five Uyghurs have already been deported from Saudi Arabia. We spoke to two of those families who confirmed these deportations. This is just one part of what appears to be a terrifying campaign by China. Over the course of our investigation, we have also found cases of Uyghurs forcibly returned to China from the United Arab Emirates and Egypt, a violation of international law and where they may face what the U.S. has labeled a genocide. Saudi Arabia, the UAE and Egypt did not respond to our request for comment. China is a major trade partner to these Muslim-majority countries who have not only turned a blind eye to China's treatment of Uyghurs, their autocratic governments have also voiced support for what China insists is a counter-terrorism campaign. Maria Mohammed has been keeping a dark secret from her boys, trying to shield them from the cruel reality of the world they were born into, a nightmare that followed them thousands of kilometers from their homeland in Xinjiang. She tells them, Daddy's away working. The last time she heard from her husband, Mohtar Rosi, he was being detained in Egypt on July 16, 2017. I said, you are, you are my, my precious. I love you so much. And you promised that day, I did not. get any message about him. Maryam was living her dream. She and Mohtar studied at Cairo's Al-Azhar University, got married and started a family. But when China's long arm reached Egypt, they scrambled to get out. Maryam says she flew to Turkey with the boys and with reports of arrests at the airport, Mohtar tried to get the ferry out to Jordan, but was stopped. There was little Maryam could do to try and find her husband. She wrote letters to UN agencies and governments, but she says no one responded. Mohtar's detention was never acknowledged. Like others, he just vanished without a trace. Egyptian authorities, believed to be acting at the behest of the Chinese government, rounded up dozens, possibly hundreds of Uyghurs, many of them male students at Al Azhar. More than 20 were forcibly returned to China, according to human rights groups. The Chinese crackdown on Uyghurs had expanded far beyond its borders. No 21, but it's not exact number. Maybe it will be more. Abdul Ayyub is a Uyghur activist. He says he's documented at least 28 deportations by these Middle Eastern countries. But no one really knows how many Uyghurs may be behind bars in the region or how many have already been deported back to China. Too often, family members fear that going public would only make things worse for their disappeared loved ones. He is my children's dad. Amanissa Abdullah is tormented by devastating guilt. 
Did she push too much? Did she not do enough to try and save her husband? She fears family in China will pay the price for her speaking out now. But she says silence is no longer an option. In two years, it's kind of a guilty feeling. There's always in, inside of me and I'm not able to sleep, not able to... Even like, if I feel happy, I have no right to feeling happy. I have no right to smile. I'm living like this. <laughs> Her husband, Ahmed Talib, lived and worked in the UAE for 10 years. In February 2018, he was detained while picking up paperwork from a Dubai police station. It was two weeks from hell for a nine-month pregnant Amanissa and her son, chasing Ahmed as he was moved between police stations and jails. I have fear if I don't be hurry up, my husband will be deported. I'm really worried about him at that time. I felt extremely helpless and uh, there is no one can help me at that time. So this is the document you got from court? Yes. She says no one would even tell her what Ahmed was accused of, only that he was wanted by China. This document Amanissa obtained from Dubai's public prosecution confirms a Chinese extradition request. It also states the prosecution decided to close the case because Chinese authorities failed to provide the required documents. But Ahmed was transferred to Abu Dhabi and a few days later, Amanissa was told he was sent back to China. <laughs> if my husband has any crime, he committed any crime, why they don't tell me? Why China don't tell me? One of the most difficult questions in my life is where is my dad? Eight-year-old Musa is left with photos and patchy childhood memories. This was in Dubai? Yes. We're making a castle, but I cannot make a castle but without my daddy. Musa says he's lucky. His little sister Amina never met her father. Like tens of thousands of Uyghurs, the family found sanctuary in Turkey. But as the government forges closer ties with China, Uyghurs feel their safe space is shrinking. Sister finger, sister finger. With nowhere left to turn, Amanissa says she once asked for directions to the sea. I say, I want to take my child, I want to sit there. Actually, what I want to do is I want to go inside because I don't know how to swim. <laughs> Amanissa asks, is this world just not big enough for Uyghurs? A truly heartbreak, a heartbreaking report there. Uh, and you saw there, Amanissa said that she's living in Turkey now. That's where we find Jumana Karachi, who joins us from Istanbul. Jumana, first let's start with uh, the Chinese government response. What have the, had they said regarding your reporting? Well, uh, first of all, Isa, I want to add that Human Rights Watch says that it is impossible in many of these cases to find out what happens to those who are forcibly returned to China. Uh, we reached out to the Chinese government. They did not respond to our request for comment on our reporting, but uh, Beijing has repeatedly denied allegations of human rights abuses targeting its Uyghur uh, minority and accusations of genocide recently, the Chinese foreign minister calling these accusations preposterous.